Man has always wanted to communicate. Call it instinct, curiosity, maybe just plain sociability. It's always led man to want to establish contact with his brothers. Man also wanted to communicate in person and over distances. His early writings being of hardly a portable nature, he at first resorted to simple transportation, his feet. At journey's end, he used the spoken word. As man grew more sophisticated, his written language evolved into a cipher, which, while comprehensive and largely explicit, was still largely unportable. And so, for communication over distances, he developed visual signals and simple codes. But man still longed to communicate in person, but faster. And legend has it, Icarus sought to imitate the birds. It didn't work out too well. Written language had now developed to the point where it was available to increasing numbers of people. But person-to-person -person communication was not keeping pace, and getting there was just an idle dream, until an advancing technology made face-to-face -face communication a much simpler matter, at least on the open sea. Inland, man found himself confined to the roots of natural waterways and railbed. Scientific advancement did not necessarily keep up with man's desire for faster communications. The 24-hour Pony Express, for example, very effective. But men tired, and so did horses. A logical advancement was the telegraph. And now, a revolution in communications was in full swing. Not only the spoken or telegraphed word, but man was getting there faster in person, and each new step forward only whetted his appetite for speed, more speed. Then, one day, he took to the air. The ancient dream of Icarus and Leonardo da Vinci was realized, and man's communication had acquired a new dimension, up. And on an historic day in May, 1927, a man named Lindbergh electrified the world. New York to Paris non-stop, 33 hours. And now, what was once a feat for heroes has become commonplace. But this mass movement has generated yet another need. Flying to far off places in this jet age is simplicity itself, whether it be the Far East or any other part of the world. But communications, recording the comings and goings of millions crossing the national frontiers of the world must be maintained. Such records must be faster than the jet age which spawned them. They must be readily available around the world. They must be sure. They must be precise. Once again, the pressure for innovation and advancement has brought forth a solution. Deep in the heart of Pan American's spectacular new building in New York is the home of Panamac, the most extensive IBM communications and reservations network of its kind ever developed. These magnetic disks are whirling faster than the eye can follow. They store information. Their capacity is enormous, and their information is available for processing at a speed of up to 300,000 logical decisions in a single second. It took six years of joint effort by international business machines and Pan American to create Panamac. The result? 
a system incorporating IBM electronic computers to record vital data on every single flight of a Pan Am Clipper all over the world. It will link 114 cities on six continents with the Electronic Computing Center in New York. What does it all add up to? Communications across the world in three seconds. Let's say France, for instance. Hello? An American? Oh, good. Uh, Monsieur Murat here, Antoine Murat, yes. I would like a reservation for 115 flight for New York. No, my wife... As he is speaking, the reservation clerk is feeding his plans into the system from Paris, and thence by direct electronic link to New York. In New York, they are assimilated, checked against seat availabilities for the flight he has requested. And automatically, the word flashes back to Paris, where the information goes on instantaneous display. Monsieur Murat does not know it yet, but he's already cleared as far as New York. Yes, I would like very much, could you have the earliest as possible reservation uh, for Caracas? For two, yes. Further, Panamax far-flung system is already at work on the second leg of his journey. The information is fed in, flashed once again to New York, assimilated and evaluated against seat availabilities on the first available flight to Caracas, and, oh yes, here's something additional from Paris and a reservation for two at uh, the Hotel uh, Tamanaco. Yes. The hotel space is available. Now, Monsieur Murat's reservations have been made, and this conversation is virtually over. Monsieur Murat's travel plans have been completed and confirmed in one brief phone call. Thank you. Thank you very much. The speed of electronic communications is obvious. However, its full capacity is not. For instance, one might very well ask, can it make logical choices? My name is Yalmo Wyatt. I have a reservation on flight 100 to London. I would like to change that to flight 2, departing later that same night. Uh-oh, here's an error. The agent heard that name as Harold White. His name is really Yalmer Wyatt, spelled W-Y-A-T-T. -T. Now let's see how Panamac handles this perfectly understandable human error. Mr. White? Well, we have no Harold White. Oh, Wyatt. Yes, you were booked. And just one moment, please. Yes, space is available for flight two to London. Now we know that Panamac has incredible speed and that it can make logical decisions. But it has still another important faculty, versatility. This young lady must be presented with a birthday cake in flight. That gentleman must have a wheelchair waiting for him on arrival. All these facts and millions more are retained in magnetic storage. Once the facts are transmitted and stored by Panamac, they are available readily. Has this record gone astray? Certainly not. Records are stored electronically, not on paper. And the correct information is available in seconds. Still another dimension to Panamac, a new flexibility to travel reservations. Let's look into the future, in a place like Calcutta, Well, we were talking to these people at lunch today, and we found that we don't have to go back home by way of Europe. That for even less money, we can continue on around the world. Oh, that's great. How about making us up a whole new itinerary? 
Five. J.P. Brown. J.A.Y. This gentleman will also want hotel reservations wherever there is more than 12 hours layover and an automobile in London and New York. Now, this is a pretty complex matter, as you can imagine. And yet, from the moment he speaks, his travel plans are being processed. What would only yesterday have seemed unbelievable will be happening before your eyes. Panamax application to air cargo also offers great advantages. Increased speed in processing cargo reservations will expedite the already rapid transfer of goods by clipper cargo. Speed of handling permits reduced inventories abroad, increases turnover, steps up sales opportunities, inevitably results in savings through mass volume. But still, a system is only as good as the people behind it. Pan American and IBM are the people behind Panamac. Their training, their experience, these are the qualities of leadership. And with Panamac, air transport takes another giant step forward. <laughs>